Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to Not Your Average Glow. This is a safe place where we come. We talk all things mental health, spirituality, and quite a bit of tarot. Today, we are doing a tarot pick a card. I did four piles today. The purpose of today's pick a card reading is to help aid in your healing and your shadow work, maybe illuminate some things that you still have to work on and to heal. Um, I did go ahead and pre-pull some cards um, to make the reading go by a little bit quicker because I'm a little crunched on time today. And also because I am using the Hush Tarot today and I don't have these all memorized. So I, um, I did not hand select, I shuffled as I usually do. But I went ahead and I looked in the booklet and seen if any of, like, besides the basic card meanings, like, you know, whatever, um, stood out to me. And I have little cheat sheets down here with channeled music and stuff to go along with the readings. So, that being said, let's jump into your readings. Um, once again, the whole purpose of today's reading is to help aid in your healing. So I set the intention that each pile would have its own unique storyline um, and that it would be separate readings. Although I have noticed a little bit of a cohesiveness with some of the piles. So it's quite possible that somebody might watch this video all the way through. And if that's the case, then more power to it. All right, so if you picked pile one, with this gorgeous black tourmaline. This was one of the first crystals I ever bought for myself. I love this stone. And this little rune right here looks kind of like an M with a X at the top. Then this is your reading. So pile one. First and foremost, black tourmaline is a protection stone. So if you felt drawn to this stone, it may be because you're needing to protect yourself and ground yourself and really be mindful of the energies around you, who you're surrounding yourself with, um, what you're allowing into your life, what kind of environments you're hanging out in. Um, black tourmaline is intended for protection and to just help absorb negative energy. So if you're feeling drawn to this stone, it's more than likely because you're surrounded by negativity. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab my little cheat sheet. The song that popped up, because I put my Spotify on shuffle, the song that popped up when I was pulling your cards for this reading was Make Damn Sure by Taking Back Sunday. I love this song because of the tune and stuff, but the lyrics to that song are incredibly toxic. Basically, it's like the perfect song to describe the thought process of a narcissist. Like, it's... Um, the lyrics are, um, I'm going to make damn sure that you can never leave. No, you'll never get away from me. Like, it's it's a really toxic song. Um, and then you have this protection zone. So you might be dealing with a narcissist. You could be uh, have somebody in your life like a, like a really toxic ex. Um, that is like clinging on to you and trying to make sure that you're not going to leave them and like really like draining on your energy and pulling on you right now. Um, if that resonates, then um, I can condense pile one's reading down to like simple. What you need to heal is completely breaking free of that energy. So like blocking that person on your social media, also energetically blocking them. If it is an ex lover and you're still holding on to items from that lover, like um, you still have like one of their t-shirts or something, or you still have pictures of you and them. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you hold on 
to items from a toxic ex or even just a toxic ex friend um, that residual energy clings sometimes to material items. Um, and this doesn't just have to be an ex lover. It can also just, you know, be like an ex best friend. Like maybe they gifted you something. Um, so simply put, you need to break from whatever energy this is. Okay. Um, but let's go ahead and jump more into the specifics of your reading. But that's the, that's the initial messages I got before even looking at the cards, okay? So this particular runestone, I am not going to try to pronounce the, the names of, of the runes. I murder them, okay? Um, but this particular rune um means like social order it's like coming back to yourself it also can um represent like friends versus enemies okay once again there's a very clear theme in pile one and then the um card that i got from the star seed oracle deck for you guys was surrender to the sweetness venus energy pleasure joy make love to life okay so once again, there is a need to realize that life is meant to be sweet. It's meant to be enjoyable. The whole purpose on life, like everybody is like, what's the purpose of life? I can simpl simplify it. Why are we here? The answer is quite simple. It's to the big purpose, not the individual purpose, but the big purpose in life is to reconnect with God and to connect others to God. And God is essentially love. And Venus energy is love energy. So the, the way you find your fulfillment in life, the way you feel connected to your purpose is by connecting with source energy, which is just connecting with true love. Um, and when you learn to vibrate in um, the frequency of love, then you, you attract more love to yourself. Um, and right now, you're in an energy where um, you're attracting this low vibrational shit because you're still clung in that low vibrational energy. Your tarot cards that you got was the Fool, the Knight of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, the Five of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with this deck, so I did look at the booklet for this. And one of the things that stood out to me in the booklet was um, the way they described this particular Fool card. Okay, so the Fool is about, you know, like taking a leap of faith. It's like finally going for something, okay? That's just regular Fool meanings, like a leap of faith, okay? Like going after somebody, going, okay, I'm going to do it. You know, it's like... Um, it's like knowing there's a risk involved, but knowing your direction and just going for it, okay? This particular full card has a ferret on it and then a bunch of moths on it. And I really, uh, a line that the book, that the booklet had written, um, stood out to me. It's describing the moths in this picture and it says their erratic movements can help them avoid danger. And it says, and then it goes on to say a little, there's a few more words, but I skipped over that. And then it says um, that the moth can also be a reminder that you could be hiding from yourself. Okay, because they, they, they come out in, in darkness. Um, you may feel like you are constantly like flitting about and jumping from thing to thing, uh, project to project, social gathering to social gathering. And it's really difficult 
for you to settle, to ground, to um, relax in life. And this is because you're in that moth-like energy. The, their, their erratic movements can protect them from danger. You may recently have been working yourself to death, um, staying really busy, and it's because your soul feels like it can't relax. My nose all of a sudden is getting like hella itchy. Um, which is like something that happens when I'm channeling. Um, I don't know why I'm not really 100% sure what it means, but, um, anyways, you may recently have been flitting about and kind of keeping parts of yourselves hidden, um, and you could also be hiding from yourself, from your true nature. And the reason that you're staying so busy, the reason that you're not wanting to settle and sit still, the reason that you're going from project to project, social gathering to social gathering, to, you know, you might actually be having trouble sleeping at night. This is giving me insomnia vibes. Um, is because you don't feel safe within your own skin to settle, okay? Um, this Eight of Pentacles energy um, is about, like, refining your, your goals, like, um, working hard at something. But something that I notice is that it looks like this, this boy is kind of chiseling out faces. It's almost like the message that I'm getting here is like you're working diligently at your like creative goals and your projects and your work life or what have you. As a distraction from the fact that you don't feel like you truly found yourself. It's like you're... Spirit, please help me put this into words. You notice that this boy is like chiseling out all these different faces. It's almost like he's tr he feels like if he works hard enough that he's going to somehow uncover his true nature. But that's not where you're found. You're truly found in the stillness. You're truly found when you do that little bit of shadow work and you shine light on your shadow in the parts of yourself that you're running from. Um, this five of pentacles is um, the way they described it in the book really stood out to me. It's a refusal to open your eyes um, to the real problems. And it says something in the book I didn't jot that part down, but it's talking, it said something in the book about like financial, financial um, problems have you feeling underwater. And then it's like, um, and then it goes on to talk more about like a refusal to see the real problem. Okay. Um, it's like having your eyes shut to the real problem at hand. Okay. And then the, the Seven of Swords is about like having the keys that you need, having all the tools available to you. Like you have the keys to walk through the door into the next chapter of your life. Like you, you have everything you already need, even though you're working diligently like you don't. And then the Queen of Pentacles is um, somebody who is who's found their stability. They know their path. They um, they have everything that they need to create a successful, peaceful, loving, happy home. And then the the Knight of Cups is somebody who's who's finally deciding to charge forth, offer their cup of love, offer offer their heart up. It's somebody who is chasing after their heart's desires. Okay, so all of these cards put together, tell me 
that you've recently dis been f working yourself to fucking death, okay? Um, because you've been avoiding, you've had your eyes shut to the real issue that material materially it's like you're focusing on your finances and your material means trying to create stability within your external world but the real issue is your internal world okay um and i feel like this has a lot to do with either a really toxic significant other that you're currently with or somebody you've recently broke up with. Like, like their energy is still lingering on you whether or not you're actually still together. You may have broken up, but you still have some healing to do around it. Or you may still be with this person and you're needing to leave, you're needing to walk out. Um, but for whatever reason, it's like you know this because this girl very, is very much so intentionally keeping her eyes shut. It's like, it's like drowning in financial problems, but closing their eyes to the real problems. I feel like you woken up to the fact that your happiness and your fulfillment can't be found with this person, that they're not it, that they're toxic for you. Um, and now you're wanting to follow your heart and to find somebody in which you feel safe to offer your true self to, okay? Um, I hope this is coming out in a way that you can, um, you can understand. Um, the, the seven of wands, which, oh, seven of swords, I mean, uh, I accidentally put it in another pile, I think. No, no, where is it? I have it written down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the seven of swords is about also like deception and how you treat others. Um, so you may have recently been lashing out at other people. There is like a cautionary bit in the booklet about like, watch the way you speak to others because you may be like lashing out at other people because of a disharmony within yourself. Um... But it's like a misdirection. It's like you're not lashing out at the person that actually caused the wound that you're actually angry at. You're lashing out at the wrong people. I hope this is making sense. Finally, like right before I was about to go into pile two, another song popped up and it's uh, I Miss You by Blink-182. Everybody knows that song. It's the... Um, don't waste your time on me. You're already the voice inside my head. Yeah. Um, so there might recently have been a queen of pentacles figure that came up into your life. Now, this, we're talking about energies here, not sex. You could be a masculine and it may resonate that you met a woman, somebody that you could see. The queen of pentacles is somebody that you could see yourself settling down with. Okay. But you could be a woman. Um, and this could have been a, a, a masculine that's just showing up in Queen of Pentacles energy, okay? Somebody that you could see yourself marrying with, somebody that you could see yourself having a loving, fulfilling um, life with, okay? And it's almost like your heart knows that this is the direction you want to go in. And it's like, you already have that knowledge. You already have all the keys, like you already have all the pieces, but now you just need to take that leap of faith, that leap of faith toward the direction that your heart wants to go in. And that's the advice that spirit has for you is that life is supposed to be sweet, 
love is supposed to be enjoyable. Um, something that I've, I've been thinking a lot on lately is, um, like the twin flame soulmate karmic relationship dynamics and the differences between all of them. Something that's not talked about a lot is that karmics only become karmics when they overstay their welcome. That a karmic relationship can actually originate as a soulmate relationship. That karmics doesn't necessarily mean that that person has to be like hella toxic and abusive. Like sometimes a karmic relationship is a good person that, that came into your life to teach you a lesson. And then spirit tells you, okay, now it's time to move on to something else. But because they're a good person and you've developed a bond with that person, you cling. Okay. Um, and then because you're clinging in spirit, it's like, okay, this isn't in alignment with you anymore. You've outgrown this. You've evolved past this. Then spirit has to dig up a little bit of toxicity to get you to move on. Okay. Um, what am I trying to say spirit? And a lot of times in society, people will tell you like to stay with people, even though you've like fallen out of love with them, even though the connection is no longer there, you're past the quote unquote honeymoon stage. Because in society, we're a lot of times people rush into love and into commitment in the infatuation stage. So like people will make things official when they're still in that like honeymoon infatuation stage. And then they get into a commitment. They might get married. They might have kids or whatever. And then it fizzles out. And society, friends and family will tell you, oh, that's normal. It's normal for you to not feel passion for this person anymore. It's normal for you to not feel connected to this person anymore. Like nobody, like you love them. Love is a choice, but nobody likes their spouse. Like we just kind of tolerate each other. That's life, that's marriage, but that's not true. That's not grounded in truth. That's not what God, spirit, the universe intended for us. But society tells us that that's normal to just settle, to just, that it's okay if the love dies out, that that's natural. And that's not true. That's the societal norm, but that's not what God intended for us. Um, so recently you've awakened to the fact that you're not happy in this connection with this toxic person, or you were not, depending on if you're still with them or you've broken up with them. And um, now you're wanting to follow your heart's desire, which is that true, authentic love, the type of love that stands the test of time, the type of love where you're married 20 plus years and you still look at your significant other the same way you did when you first met, where the, where the love and the passion never dies out. And soul, spirit, your higher self is saying that you can have that to surrender to the sweetness of life, that Venus energy, pleasure, joy, make love to life, that love and life can coexist, that you don't have to outgrow the honeymoon stage, that that's, that it's not out of reach, but you have to believe that you're deserving of it. And right now you're needing to heal the wounding done on your heart by this toxic person, okay? That's the message for pile one. I hope that it helped. Um, my homework for you is to completely cut that energy out of your life, cut them out of your social media, block them energetically and physically, um, and then to do some journaling and some shadow work and some praying and some healing, possibly some therapy and some counseling around that relationship and what it did to your heart. Because it's, it's created some false ideologies around your heart that you're not deserving of real love, that that's what love is and that's not true. Okay? All right. Let's clear that energy. Jump in. Let's jump into pile number two. 
high pile number two if you picked the green fluorite i love this stone i got this actually um at a little fair thing me and my kids did a mining game where they gave us like buckets and stuff and you like shook it out and there's crystals and stuff this came out of like a little bucket at a thing um it's green fluorite green fluorite is like a harmonizer stone it's it's to help aid in bringing balance and i really like um what it said when i looked it up in a book that i have on like different stones and stuff it says making sense out of confusion reframing your thoughts so this stone is good in helping you to reorganize your thoughts and break away at all the bullshit and that is essentially what shadow work is that is the um the whole point of this reading today is to help aid in breaking away at all the mess and bringing it back into clarity okay your star seed oracle card that you got is the star keeper i love this card um, it says, Cosmic Ancestor, seed the light by staying grounded. And your rune kind of looks like an arrow pointing upward. Um, this is about honor, leadership, and authority, okay? So right off the rip, before even looking at the tarot, I get a very clear message that with the Starkeeper and... Um, and the green fluorite and this card, it's like pointing up at like the sky and it's talking about leadership and authority. The combination of all of this is like, in pile number two, it's like remembering. It's okay. So this is very much so giving me your purpose on this earth is for a higher purpose like you are meant to be a spiritual leader of sorts and what spirit is wanting you to do is to remember that it's like very much so giving like akashic records vibe it's very much so giving like a need to do like a guided meditation about like remembering your soul's purpose like who you like your true identity like it's it's giving me that like you are a star seed that you're meant to be here on this earth. Um, uh, okay, so I'm getting like in the Lion King, like when Mufasa's in the clouds and he's like, Simba, remember who you are. Like it's giving that, okay? So it's like, it's like literally your stone is like pointing up at the sky. It's like your identity is in who the universe has created you to be, not who you think you are based upon this earth, based upon your material success, your job, your, you know, the parents you were born to, you know, all of that. Like that's not your identity. It's like remembering that, you came to this earth for a higher purpose. And I love that the green fluorite is like a making sense out of the confusion and it's like reframing your thoughts because um, the world wants you to believe that you're uh, essentially like regular, that you're just another person put on this earth to just work your nine to five and um, to just do your thing, you know? But it's like, this is very, this is probably the most spiritual of the piles. Um, well, I, I don't know. The next one's pretty spiritual too. Um, it's very much so like coming back to your true nature and your true nature being very much so in connection with spirit and with God. Okay. Okay. So what is, what is your blockage? What is keeping you stuck? What is spirit wanting you to heal from to help you awaken to this truth? Okay. You've got the two of wands. Okay. You've got the three of pentacles in reverse. You've got the five of swords. Okay. You've got the queen of swords. And then you've got the king of swords okay let me kind of lay these out so i can okay first and foremost the two of wands is about setting out in a new direction in life okay this is like 
being at a crossroads in your life, but you notice that the sign is like very much so rusted and cracked and it's like covered in vines. And it's like, it's like the path you've been on thus far has been a, a difficult one, okay? It has, um, it's come with a lot of struggle, okay? Um, the Three of Pentacles is in reverse, is about like mistrust and refusing to take advice from other people, okay? It's like not trusting the advice that other people have given you, okay? And then the Five of Swords is about like gaining material success, like um, things are popping off for you but it comes with a price, okay? And I kind of, I have written at the top of my notes here, leadership with a price, okay? And then the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords are both people in power whom know themselves. Like they're very they're very clear in their identity and who they are and they walk in their power. Um, they could both kind of be a little sharp tongued and a little, um, a little, you can't sit with us, but it's because they, they know themselves. Okay. It's like, they're not gonna, <sighs> fuck, what am I trying to say here? Spirit. Essentially what I'm, I'm seeing is that you recently have gained a lot of material success. It's kind of like you've, you've reached a place where you're feeling good about your finances, about your goals, like your, your career is like kind of popped up, but it's like, it's like weeds are popped all up in your garden. Okay. It's like, it's like, I got everything I wanted, but it didn't make me happy. I finally reached what I was chasing after and yet I'm still not fulfilled, okay? It's very much so giving me you were on the hadronic treadmill, okay? Um, and maybe you've had friends and family who have tried to give you advice and tried to lead you in another direction and um, you didn't take it in the past um, because you were so concentrated on chasing these goals. And now you've kind of reached a crossroads where you're like, well, fuck, I've, I've made it here, but I'm not happy. Where do I go now? You know? Um, I can't help but notice that the Queen of Swords here is sitting on top of like a raven or a crow and she, her mask is that of a raven or a crow. Um, I associate ravens and um, crows with Lilith, which is like dark feminine energy. Um, it's very spiritual. It's very um, witchy vibes, okay? Um, And I can't help but notice that she's like naked. I feel like you've made a lot of headway in the 3D. And now you've recently woken up to the truth. Like maybe you've gone through a spiritual awakening and um, you've woken up to the truth that your purpose is a more spiritually aligned one. And you're like, fuck, what do I do? Like, it's giving me um, very much so 
like when I went through my spiritual awakening, like I got everything I wanted. I got the house, the home, I got the guy, like I was engaged. I had the kids. I had the nice like little white picket fence, like suburban, like dream. You know, I had the American dream and then I went through a sp spiritual awakening and I was like, this is not aligned with my true nature. It's like I, I was, I was perfectly content with everything that I had. I fought so hard for it. And then I went through a spiritual awakening and I up leveled and I was looking around and I felt so alone in a room full of people because it was like the room full of people no longer, I no longer was vibrating at the same frequency as them. I no longer had the same morals, the same ideals. Like I, I had a different outlook on life. And yes, those are good people. They're loving people. I love them. I care about them, but I outgrew them. They weren't, they were no longer on the same path as me. It's like, I'm getting very much so that energy for you. It's like, I'm seeing somebody like in like the corporate world, like, getting congratulated on a recent project and everybody's like you did it man i'm so happy for you you know congratulations what's your next thing and you're sitting there and you're like i'm actually thinking like you could like you feel like you can't like the mistrust thing it's like you feel like you can't open up to people and tell them that you're thinking about throwing it all away you're thinking about like quitting the job you're thinking about like i don't know maybe like going to another country and like living in a monastery for a little bit because like you're feeling called to a very spiritual path but like the world can't make sense of that like it's like it's giving me like somebody's like who has recently come into money like I don't know like say you're like a millionaire or something and then you're like I want to live in a van down by a river, you know, like it's giving me like the world would think you've lost your fucking mind because you've made it, but it doesn't feel like you've made it. I can't, I'm also noticing here that there is a king of swords and a queen of swords. That is a match. So you may have recently come into uh, contact with another person, uh, possibly like a twin flame or soulmate energy, who mirrored back to you your true nature. So you might have recently come into contact with somebody who helped illuminate the fact that you're not in alignment with your true nature. And it was through, um, I feel like this person, you're not with this person now. I, I don't feel like you're with this person. I feel like they might've, like I noticed that both these people are being illustrated by birds. So they just kind of flew in and flew out, okay? Um, but I feel like they helped they helped you remove the mask of your true nature and discover this more spiritual side, this more witchy side of yourself. Um, and then while I was pulling these cards, songs came up independent, which didn't make sense to me. I wrote them down because that's what spirit wanted, but now they're making sense. Um, uh, funny, my name is Samantha, but one of the songs is Samantha song, um, by super American. Um, I like the song. I just, I don't listen to it very often, but my Spotify was on shuffle. So yeah, there's a song, um, called Samantha song. That's like, it's talking about a breakup. It's like, um, it's like, I, I can't remember the lyrics now, but it's talking about a breakup and, um, the girl taking like what she wanted and him like you sh you should value like something else and she like took what she wanted and she left and he's like you should have wanted this and you should have wanted that and you know like basically missing her um and then the other song is independent with you by kylie morgan and it's basically saying that um I want to keep my independence. I want to be a boss and I want to, um, 
I want to still chase my goals and my dreams and my aspirations, but can I do it with you? You know, I feel like maybe for pile number two, this won't resonate for everyone, but for pile number two, you may have been at a crossroads like in the past where you had to choose between love and a romantic relationship and um, your career. And you may have chosen your career and then chased those dreams, like material dreams. And then once you reach that success, realized that you're now missing this person. And you're like, fuck, maybe I never had to make a choice. Maybe I didn't have to say, oh, I can't do a relationship right now. I'm focused on work or I'm focused on school or whatever. Maybe I could have had both, but I feel like you were afraid to lose your identity. You were afraid that you would get like wrapped up in a relationship and that it would like distract you from your purpose, like from your goals and your dreams and your success. But now you're realizing once you reached that level of success that you were chasing after that it didn't mean anything to you anyway. Um, yeah, so you're needing to do some healing around that, okay? You're at a crossroads now where it's like you have a choice to be made. And the choice is to... What Spirit's guiding you to do is to chase your true authentic nature. To bring it back to the core of why you're here. And like I said in Pio 1, the whole purpose... Of this life on earth is to connect with source energy and source energy is love that is the reason we're here not for material success not for all the money and the fame and the whatever it's it's to live in the vibration of love it's to be in harmony with other humans so that should give you a huge clue into which direction you're supposed to go number three if you chose this this beautiful amethyst like fluorite combo cluster it's got like some fluorite on the back and it's an amethyst okay um then this is your reading i love this stone it's so pretty it's one of the first ones that i ever got um also, you have this rune. It looks like an M. Okay. This rune means harmony and teamwork. And then your starseed oracle card is empathic starseed energy sovereignty, absorbing what is not yours. Okay. The Amethyst. I googled like what amethyst and fluorite healing properties were when they're combined because I like that the stone has both amethyst and fluorite on it and it was really cool. It was mental clarity and um, elevated energy. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. So um, So there's a very clear message here and that'll come out. Like you notice this girl's looking into a mirror and it's like there's a portal in the mirror. It's like discovering your true self, okay? It's like seeing your reflection for the first time. Then you got as far as um, tarot cards go, you have the two of swords, which shows a little kitten hidden behind a human mask. Then you got the devil, which is two kittens, one of them wearing a mask, okay? Then you got the six of pentacles here, okay? Then you've got the uh, five of wands in reverse. And um, you've got the three of cups reversed. And your channeled songs are Handsomer by Russ and Industry Baby by Little Nas. Both of those songs are talking about like chasing material success. Both of them are, um, Handsomer is 
I know I'm fine, but the money make me handsomer, you know? And then um, industry baby is like just talking about like your identity in the industry. You know, look up those songs. There'll be like lyrics in there. Immediately with these two cards coming out like back to back with these kittens and the masks. And then this card having the mirror in it. Immediately. It's like um, the whole point of this reading for pile number three is taking off the mask. And I feel for you guys, the mask is about the way you identify with money. Like I said, these are all supposed to be like individual piles, but I do see a cohesive storyline throughout. So there might be somebody here who's watching all of the piles. Um, but you have an attachment to a false idea of who you are. Um, you've been wearing a mask and hiding behind a mask for a very long time. And right now, Spirit is saying, you've got to let it come off. You've got to look yourself in the face and come back to your true self. Um, this card says, um, empathic seed and absorbing what's not yours. You may have been feeling really low energy lately with the, um, this crystal said elevated energy. This is supposed to help like give you more energy. You may be feeling down and out and like drained and tired and just ugh, lately. And it's because you're absorbing the energy of those around you because you have some codependency here um, with the devil energy. You're like clinged to the wrong people. Okay. Is the three of cups upright is about like celebration and hanging out with friends and this, that, and the other. But um, in reverse, it's like restraint. It's, it's like the people around you draining you. It's like, it's, I said this in the last pile, but it's like when you go through a spiritual awakening, it's like you wake up one day and realize, okay, this job even though it pays well, it's not what I want. These people, they're not living their life right. This this relationship that I'm in, this sweet person, yeah, I care about them, but they're not my human. They're not the person that God has for me. It's like you woke up and the mask fell off and you're like, shit, I'm out of alignment. And now you're like, well, what is my true nature? What am I supposed to be in alignment with? And spirits wanting you to take a good, long, hard look in the mirror and figure out your true nature. Your true nature is this empathic star seed, this person who um, who's supposed to help others. Um, the this card here. The Six of Pentacles energy. You see how she has a white raven here? Um, this is like your monetary purpose being rooted in spiritual practice. So you might actually be destined to be a healer of sorts as a job. You might be somebody who's meant to be like... Um, like a, a Reiki healer or a or somebody who like teaches like breathwork classes or somebody who's like a um, tarot reader or a shaman like you your purpose in life might actually like your purpose is is to do healing work but you might actually find monetary success in doing that. Um, I just, there is a quote in Grey's Anatomy where Meredith Grey is remembering what her mom said to her when she was very young. Um, she was talking about like depression and like 
being like just in the pits of depression. And she says the carousel just keeps on turning. And um, you notice that this woman is like riding like a black goat and it looks like she's riding a carousel, okay? Black goats, now I, I don't believe that they're associated with the devil in any way, but like in Hollywood or whatever, a lot of times like the devil, Lucifer, whatever, is uh, depicted as um, a black goat. Um, once again, I don't believe that actually at all. That's just making fun of like pagan, the pagan, um, God pan. But anyways, I feel like the message here is that the carousel just keeps on turning. Like you've been stuck in this, this cycle because you fell into like Satan's trap, like the devil's trap of believing that your happiness, your success came from whatever this mask was, came from these people, this job, this thing. I'm being reminded of that movie, um, God's Not Dead, where there's the son talking to his mother with like dementia or whatever. She's like this elderly lady. And he's like, he's talking down on her. Like, look at me. Like, I'm a miserable person and I'm this and I'm that. And I'm like this terrible person, but I've got money and I've got this and I've got that. And look at you. You've always been a saint. You've always been so sweet. And you can barely even, you can't even remember who I am. And he's talking to his own mom. And he's like angry. And then it's like, she, she has this like, really profound like lucid thought where she she says to him something along the lines of like you've gained all this material success like you're in this mansion in this palace and satan will allow you to believe that you've made it in life like you're living the good life like you're on a yacht with your friends and you're trying to buy money and you've got like all the, all the hoes and you know, like, like I'm picturing like a guy, like literally like on a yacht, like surrounded by all these hot women and the drugs and the alcohol. And he's like, yeah, I'm making, I'm living the good life. Like my life is like a music video. Okay. And then she goes on further to say, but then one day the door swings shut and locks and it all goes away and you realize you're in a jail cell. It's like Satan sometimes will give you, will show up as everything you ever wanted. It's like Satan will show up as your wish fulfillment, as your dream job, as like your dream girl or dream guy or whatever. It's like sometimes God doesn't, God allows for three free will and Satan will show up as a wolf in sheep's clothing will show up as everything you ever thought you wanted because if Satan was to show up as everything that he is lies and deceit negativity and falsehood then you wouldn't choose that so Satan shows up is like shit wrapped in a candy wrapper. You know what I mean? So it's like you chose this life because it looked sweet on the outside. It looked like everything you wanted. And then you realized, fuck, I'm chasing an idea, not a reality. It's like you've woken to the truth. You've broken the matrix, essentially. In all three of these piles, and actually in the following pile, because I already Hold cards. You've broken the matrix. You've gone through spiritual awakening and now you're unsatisfied with life. It's because your worth, your value, your happiness doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from notoriety and fame. It doesn't come from this false idea that the money makes me handsomer. Like, sure, to the wrong people devil energy to the right people to people who are aligned with you people who want the best for you god's people other star seeds other spiritually woken people the money doesn't mean shit to them it's it's cool dude glad you got it in the bank i'm just as happy and content 
um, in my tent in the woods somewhere because like they, they know the true value of like authentic friendship, real love, the joy and the freedom that comes from walking in your purpose. They know what it's like to walk with God and to be operating out of the frequency of love and to be vibrating in that higher frequency. And there is no greater joy. There's no greater joy. It's true freedom. It's living out of your inner child and being able to play. They know that. So like, it's, it's the Shania Twain song that don't impress me much. Uh, 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 so you've got the moves, but have you got the touch? You know, they, they're like, okay, cool. So you got money. So you're hot. Where's your heart at? Where's your soul at? Do you have a heart for the people? Do you like love people? Do you know how to, you know, that's the vibration you're meant to be at. So that's what God's spirit is wanting you to focus your attention on and heal at this time. All right, finally, pile number three, the serpentine egg. This stone is so cool. It looks like, like, a, like a dragon egg that's been like cracked open. It's so cool, okay? Um, the serpentine egg is, um, it helps you manifest what you want in life and it helps aid in spiritual exploration. Okay. Love this stone. It's actually one of the most recent stones that I've gotten. And finally, your rune looks like a, like a little pointy R. Um, and it's about evolution. So it's like the stone means spiritual as exploration and then the rune is about um about evolution and then the card that you got is water your garden nour nourishment body care tenderness and rest okay immediately oh and your channeled song was drops of jupiter by train love that song haven't heard it in Years. That's such a good song. It's um, uh, it's the tell me, did you sail across the sun? Did you make it to the Milky Way and see the lights are changing? That heaven is overrated. You know, um, it's about spiritual exploration essentially. Like that's that's what the song is about. So like, there's a very clear theme all throughout this whole video but for this channel spirit before even pulling the card spirit is like explore spirituality explore your spiritual practices nourish yourself by diving deep into prayer meditation breath work like they're wanting your soul to be at peace they're wanting you to be able to rest easy in the arms of God, in the arms of the divine. Like spirit is calling you to allow your soul to rest. And you're, you, you learn to rest when you feel held and you feel held by coming back to your true authentic nature and knowing who God is and knowing that you are a child of God and that God is a safeguard and protecting you and loving you and holding you. When you come back to your true nature and you rediscover your authentic self and your purpose here on earth and you um, make your primary focus aligning with spirit and connecting with God, with source, then your soul can rest because it's like, oh, I don't have to stress about this that and the other i can just breathe easily it's, it's good shit it's very good shit so you've got page of pentacles which is wanting to set out on a new endeavor you've got the magician which is literally manifesting the life of your dreams okay it's manifestation energy and you got the um, 
the knight of wands which is like fighting for what the direction you want to go and it's like making the effort it's like fighting for what you want you've got justice it's like things have come into balance you've realized what you want you know right from wrong and then you got um the seven of wands which is standing your ground in the face of opposition it's like feel like even though I very much so intended for these to be, it's getting hot in here, even though I very much so intended for these to each be like their own unique storyline, I feel like this is very much so like a timeline. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> happens sometimes, spirit's got a mind of its own. Um, I feel like you've gone through a spiritual awakening, you're decide you went through that crossroads, you were like, okay, I need to make a choice, am I going to choose... Um, it's like you were in an unhealthy relationship and stuck in toxicity. Then it's like you came across somebody who mirrored to you your true authentic nature and the direction you want to go in life. Then you got to a crossroads and you got to choose, okay, am I going to stay in the, the bullshit and stuck in the matrix or am I going to follow the frequency of love and of higher truth? And it's like you're going through the spiritual awakening. You've woken up to your true authentic nature, your purpose here on earth because that was the whole point of all of the other shit. And now you're at a place where you're wanting to bring it into fruition. You are wanting to chase after what God has for it's like you're wanting to create heaven on earth. You're wanting to manifest a life that is in balance with your true self. But say no like that. Uh, you got apps, okay? Like I, I'm picturing, okay, there's this uh, really funny episode of um carpool karaoke with um oh who was it was it nikki i think it was nikki minaj <laughs> and she was like she's like trying to teach him like what the word ops meant you know <laughs> and he's like oh she's like oh you got people in, uh that you don't like he's like yeah my neighbors they suck and uh she's like she's like all right so we're gonna go get them and blah 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 but he's she's like talking about like shooting people up and stuff and he's like no no i just don't like them like i was just thinking like a mean text or something you know it's like you've got ops okay you've got people who for whatever reason don't want to see you go down this path that you know is true to your to your authentic self spirits advice for you is to very much so nourish yourself by grounding and meditating and doing breath work and healing and then standing up for yourself fighting for what you know to be true you know the path that you need to go down it's it's this pile is I've made a choice now I'm gonna do it and I'm going to stand my ground. Um, the other song that popped up while I was pulling these cards is Cool To You by Teenage Priest. It's, am I fucking cool to you? Even though I hate myself, am I cool to you? It's like maybe in the past you were stuck trying to be like cool, like trying to be liked by everybody, trying to make everybody happy. But here's the truth. It doesn't matter how fucking cool you naturally are. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how famous you are, blah, 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 blah. You Haters are going to hate, okay? You could be the coolest, chillest, nicest fucking person in the entire world, and haters are still going to find a reason to hate you. And it's like you were... It's like for a while you were stuck in that energy of trying to be cool, and it's like you realize that people still like that didn't earn love okay and now you're wanting to go in the direction that'll bring you inner peace that'll like nourish your garden that'll like water your soul and you get haters and spirit's just like okay so and fight it's okay to fight for the right thing. 
it's, it's good. It's encouraged. Haters are going to hate. And sometimes you have to speak up for yourself. You have to stand your ground in the face of opposition. You have to. Okay. I am a Taurus. We are super chill, super easy going. We genuinely get along with just about everybody. Okay. And it's like, we just seem like a lazy cow, just chilling in a field, just eating grass, just minding our business. But we have a reputation when you push us, we turn into a bowl in a china shop. I am very much so with that person. I am chill. I'm so easy going. But like for the right things, you get a bowl in a china shop. Like I will stand my fucking ground when it comes to wrong versus right. Like I'm a very moral person. If I see somebody being bullied, I can't just idly sit still and watch it happen. Like I'm going to speak up. If somebody is like 